Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV. In this part of the tutorial that I'm showing you on how to create custom buttons, I've added some labels so that we can see what these different buttons mean and how they are going to change. And one of the other things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the background color. So I have some custom images here and they look a lot better on a little bit of a darker background. So let's go ahead and add a darker background. You can see that there's some borders on these buttons so that they pop out. And this is non-retina and this is retina. So they look a lot nicer over on the left. So these are our buttons that we're working with. And right now I wanna show you how to add a little bit of an animation here for this button to make it so that it sort of has the same effect that you get with the system buttons, which sort of fade in after fading out. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have to add a outlet for our button so that we can connect it to our code. And so I have the view controller file over here. Now I've already removed the memory warning method because we don't need that. And I've cleaned up the comments in here a little bit. All I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna drag a connection from this button into this area in the either the .m or in the .h file. Now, I like to do it in the .m because Xcode automatically gives me this area. This is kind of a private area. It makes it so it's not fully exposed to every other code file that you're working with. And it's just a, a best practice when you don't need to expose certain UI elements to other code files. So here we'll give it a name. We'll just call it red button. This is the only one that we're gonna connect right now. And it's gonna be of type red button and we can hit connect and that will give us a button to work with. The other thing that we can do is we can connect an action. So I can do red button pressed and that will give us a message or an area where we can type a message. So I can do an NS log down here. Now it's capital NS log. And then here is our message, red button pressed. And we can go ahead and run using the command R shortcut. And now when we press this button, we'll see a message pops up. All right, so how can we get an animation? Well there are actions that we can register this button with. And so now we have the ability to work with our red button because we created this outlet up top. We called it red button. So we can access it using a property. So we use the self dot red button to access it. I'm gonna switch back to the single view. So we're gonna to have to juggle some windows here. And then we'll go back to our view controller dot M and we're working right here. So now what I wanna do is I want to change the color of the button. And there's two actions that we can use here. So if I do red button, I can call a method. If I add the end square bracket, we can add to target, which is going to be self, because we want this code file, the viewcontroller.m file to handle the message. And we can add a custom selector. So here we do a keyword at selector, and we're gonna pass it a message. So this is gonna be for two different control states. Control, or sorry, control events are when you're interacting with the screen with your finger. So when you touch something, that's gonna send a UI control event for touching down. And then you also can send another event when you touch up, and there's a special one called touch up inside when you're lifting up with inside the button rather than sort of dragging off to cancel uh, a button press. So here we're just gonna have a touch down and we'll call it button touchdown just to make it more specific. And it's gonna give us an error when we finish writing this saying that it doesn't exist, that's something that we're gonna be adding, so don't worry yet. So here we need to add a touch up event and we're gonna look at our list of events that we have here on the right. And I'm just gonna scroll through them. So we're looking for a touchdown, so that's right here and then we can add a semicolon. So now if we were to go ahead and run this, we touch the button, our app is going to crash because we haven't implemented the method. Now, you wanna know why it's crashing? This area is where you need to look and you can make sure that it's visible by clicking this button and then you can hide the variable view by clicking this button. So with this, 
the important thing anytime you have a crash is to scroll up to the top of your console window and that's what this area is and look at the message. So here we're seeing that we have an app terminating because of an exception and above we see that there's an unrecognized selector. So this is telling you the issue right here. So in order to fix this, we need to go back. So I'll hit the back arrow and I'll scroll down to this area and we're gonna add a new method. So we use the minus and then this is gonna be a void and then it's gonna be the same name as what we wrote above. So this is why it's crashing, it doesn't exist. So button touchdown needs to exist and then the parameter that we're gonna pass in, I'm gonna use a UI button and this we'll just call button. So if we go ahead and run this again, we'll now see that it no longer crashes. Now we can print out a message here just to show you when this is gonna fire and this will be down. And then let's go ahead and add one for when the button is up. So I'm gonna add one new method and we'll do this before we add the target action because then we'll get some code completion. So this will be button touch up inside, UI button, button. So the parameter being passed in is the actual button that is being affected. And here we can do touch up inside. And then we'll go ahead and add a new target. So self dot red button, add target self, which means it's gonna be this code file that's gonna be handling the message. The selector, which is gonna be the name of the method that's going to be called. And we wanna make sure that we use the correct one. So we have the button touch up inside. That's the one we wanna use. So it auto completed for us. I can hit tab to go to the next area. And the UI control event is not gonna be the touch down. It's going to be our touch up inside, which we'll find down here, not the outside. We want the inside. And we'll go ahead and add that. And now let's run the app. So what happens is when we touch down, you'll see that the down happens. Now I still have my finger down. If I were to let go and release, we're not going to, or we shouldn't see the touch up inside, but we do. And I'm gonna let go again. So we now see the touch up inside message is popping up. There's, oh, okay, so there's a certain area around the button where if we drag, you'll see that the button reverted to its color, and if I let go here, we no longer see the touch up inside, nor do we see the red button being pressed. So you can see it's down. I drag out to cancel. Now we've canceled. If I let go, no other events fire. And typically when we connect a button in Interface Builder, which is what we did here with the red button pressed, this is associated with the event touch up inside and so this will get fired just like our other touch up inside, except we're gonna do some custom logic in here. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and change the alpha of the button. So we can say button.alpha is equal to 0 0.15. And if you're falling behind and you haven't typed everything, just pause the video as you're going and it will be a lot easier to type all this code. So when the touch up inside happens, we want to go back to one alpha. So one alpha is fully visible and zero is fully transparent. So when we click on this, we see now we're getting the behavior that we had with our default system buttons. So that's the same type of behavior. And it's not quite what I want. I just want the title color to change. So what we're going to do here, instead of the button dot alpha, I'm going to switch it to button dot. And if I hit escape here, I can start typing title label dot alpha. We go ahead and run this and we'll see that doesn't quite work and the issue is I didn't modify it down here as well. So make sure that you modify both for the label and this is going to make it so that the, the color is not going to be overpowering and it's going to come back. Now we don't have a nice animation like we do up here and the easiest way to get that is to use the UI view animation. So I'll show you how to do that with just a couple extra lines of code. It's really just one. And we do UI view animation or animate with duration. Now you wanna use this second one right here. If you just click on it, that'll make it appear. I'd like to use 0 0.3. This is sort of around what I've visually seen Apple's animations to be for certain things like fade in, fade out. 
for small UI elements like this. And here we'll add a code block. So a code block has this up symbol, and then it has an open curly brace and a closed curly brace. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to match that bracket, so that square bracket, and then we add our semicolon. So in here, we can actually put code that can animate over time. And so alpha is one of the things that is able to animate over time. And so if we go ahead and run this, you can now see that this color fades in quickly. If we want to see what this looks like, if it's a little bit slower, we can do it over two seconds and you can watch it slowly fade in every time we click on it. All right, so let's put that back to 0 0.3 and we'll run it again. So this is our custom button with a little bit of an animation. It sort of makes it look like you're pushing in the button, the color turns off and then the color comes back alive. So it's giving you a little bit of an animation context, which is kind of cool. And if you want to apply that to your app, you can go ahead. And this is sort of the, just the comparison between the different buttons. And that is how you can customize buttons using Xcode's interface builder to do it all at design time. Or if you want to add a little bit of extra spazzazz, you can do that in code. And in the next video, we're going to learn how to do this all in code. It's going to be a little bit more involved but it's definitely a good thing to learn because you'll want to add buttons programmatically depending on certain conditions in your app. So play around with these buttons, create some custom images for your own style, and don't forget to subscribe and like this video if this was helpful.